Hello Watch Enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. Within watch journalism, watch strap reviews can come across as rather flimsy. Sometimes you have an article presenting a new NATO strap as immeasurably better than all others, when in actual fact the margin to improve the weave, stitching and hardware of any given strap is far smaller than the large premiums one can end up paying as a consumer. Other times you have a leather strap which, whilst undoubtedly good quality, starts to feel like dubious value when you consider a trendy lack of backing, stitching and the fact that if the same leather were used for a bag or jacket, the end product would be far cheaper. In the world of waterproof straps, at the very least, there are some empirically clear winners in terms of materials chosen, manufacturing quality and the overall finish of the product. If you want something cheap, durable and essentially foolproof, a woven nylon NATO strap is the answer. If you want a big, tough, comfortable dive strap, then an isoframe would be a wise choice, but if you want something slender, discreet and yet rubber and waterproof, a tropic strap will fit the bill. But what if a brand were to want a more luxurious option for their dive watch strap? Most brands will go for either a proprietary rubber strap, or more likely, circumvent the problem entirely with a metal bracelet. Blancpain, however, didn't choose this path with the modern iterations of the 50 Fathoms. Well, I suppose that's half true, because of course the 50 Fathoms has a very appealing bracelet. Yet the enduring image of this luxurious dive watch is that of a watch on a sailcloth strap. As you'll already know from the title of this video, these very straps are the subject of this review in the hands of Artem, a brand dedicated to making what is generally seen as a difficult type of strap to make on a budget a more accessible choice. As you can imagine, I was very intrigued to give such an ambition a run for its money, but as a matter of respect, I must let you know that I've been allowed to keep these straps, but was told that I didn't have to produce a review if I didn't like them. Make of that what you will. Now, the sailcloth strap is a curious thing, really. You see, sailcloth is traditionally a heavy canvas for, as you'll already have guessed, the production of durable, hard-wearing sails, and nowadays nylon tends to be chosen. As a result, for a brand like Blancpain with a propeller-shaped automatic rotor and effortlessly vintage charm connected to the sea, this was quite a good material for a strap choice. Still, there is a bit of an elephant in the room when it comes to deciding whether a sailcloth strap is any good, the fact that so few brands offer them. As a result of this, there isn't really a correct format for what one of these straps should be. Consequently, given that Blancpain is the preeminent user of sailcloth straps, and is likely where most potential buyers have found inspiration for their purchase, I'm going to use their strap style as the target. If we take those very Blancpain straps, the construction is the result of sailcloth, a thick, densely woven nylon fabric with a somewhat waxy texture and behaviour, being used as a top leather for aesthetics and strength, with a rubber backing for smoothness against the wrist. This pairing of two materials also provides the opportunity for delightful stitching and exceptionally finished sides in addition to the bolstering which the very best leather straps exhibit. Of course, cheaper options are widely available on the market, with prices beginning around £20. Yet, on the whole, these have very feeble holes punched through either a coarse nylon weave rather than the 90 degree crisscross used by Blancpain, or an embossed plastic substitute. Priced from about 85 US dollars, the featured Artem straps are around two and a half times the price of the cheapest sailcloth straps on the market, but also an awfully long way from a Blancpain strap costing a few hundred without even the hardware. Purely speaking of materials, the Artem strap is far nearer the latter than the former, in that it replicates the weave, the bolstering and the stitching of the Blancpain item pretty much perfectly. Granted, the Artem is slightly more aggressively tapered from bolstered top to thin tip, but the neat rolling and tucking of the strap sides has been impeccably done. I'll put it this way, if these Artems were Blancpain branded, I don't think that anybody could tell the difference very easily. That's partly because one doesn't really see much of a quality difference across different prices in nylon, but it's mostly because of the quality of construction. But just as a chair, no matter how beautiful it may be, is not truly a chair if uncomfortable to sit in, these Artem straps need to be comfortable and practical. Luckily they are, and are considerably supple, adjusting to the wrist rather quickly, although the hardware does make a difference, but more on that later. Curiously, what you notice most with these straps is the detailing. Details like the holes which, whilst cut through nylon weave, are wide, symmetrically circular, and perfectly sealed, a consequence of care and a much denser weave than you'd see on a NATO strap, for instance. You also notice the bolster of the strap and the different sized keepers, along with a very, very consistent stitch along the full length of the strap. But in this video you see three different straps. All of these are standard length, but two different widths, 
20 and 22 millimeters. The 20 millimeter strap is the one with white stitching, whilst the black and grey stitched ones are 22 millimeters. I should add that all colors, including blue and red in addition to the ones shown, are available in 20, 21 and 22 millimeter sizes, in addition to 19 and 23 millimeter sizes in black and grey. Most importantly though, they all have different hardware fitted, a stainless steel pin buckle, a stainless steel pin buckle with black PVD coating, a Richard Mille style butterfly deployant, and a Blancpain style deployant. Artem also offer an Omega style elbow deployant, but I haven't handled it so I don't think I can really comment. The standard pin buckle is what you receive in the box, and quite honestly, there isn't much reason to upgrade unless you particularly enjoy a deployant. It's well finished with polished and brushed surfaces, and whilst there are some proportional inconsistencies between the PVD and plain ones I have received, neither diminish the experience. Ultimately, a pin buckle is hard to go wrong with, and for the price I think that both of these are extremely good choices, with the PVD option being useful if you happen to be wearing it on a watch with which the standard stainless one simply wouldn't fit. Moving to the deployants, we have quite a lot of variation. For a 20mm strap from Artem, you have a taper down to 18mm at the clasp, meaning that either a pin buckle, an Omega style deployant, or what I have here, a Richard Mille style deployant are available. These particular deployants follow a butterfly style, with two equally sized halves which, unusually, use a leaf spring to pop open or closed, and use the same spring to remain closed. This means that there are no fiddly buttons either to press or to break, depending upon how you see it, yet I can't see any real diminishment in security, because after all, if you were to catch the strap on something, and it were to open, it would simply hang around your wrist. Where machining is concerned, these deployments are well made, certainly for the price of around £50, with brushed and polished elements, and a very secure pin which prevents damage to the strap holes. I must confess that there are some sharp edges, and at times I've caught some arm hair in the intricacies of the leaf spring arrangement, but overall I think it's a very secure and interestingly unusual choice for such a strap. My preference, though, falls squarely on the Blancpain style deployant available, with a 20mm width for a tapered 22mm strap. These are really rather unusual, because whilst they have two arms like a butterfly clasp, one is shorter than the other, clips into place, and sits under the other. The second is longer, and is controlled by a trigger on either side of the buckle, with the arm itself acting as a nice, strong spring. What's unusual here is that the pin is not only a large and extremely secure screw, that the smaller limb can be used as a dive extension, which I think is quite clever. Overall, I think this deployment is also superior because, perhaps down to Blancpain's original styling, it has more curved areas which creates perhaps a more luxurious feel, if one's to put a label on it. But this leads us to a key question. Are Artem sailcloth straps worth the money? Well, I could give you a rather glib but obvious passage about how much more expensive the Blancpain equivalent is, and this would be true. But more realistically, Artem straps will be good value for different reasons for different customers. For a Blancpain customer, these Artem straps allow a choice of length, stitch and clasp style which Blancpain themselves simply don't, as well as the opportunity to wear effectively the same strap but without any of the peril associated. For anyone else, they provide pretty much the pinnacle of waterproof straps on the far dressier side than either an isoprene or Tropic strap. In truth, the only luxury waterproof strap I can see matching this is the woven strap which Tudor offers, which is delightful and is rather remarkably made on a loom in a way very different to any other NATO strap or one-piece strap you might have come across. Even so, you'll pay a couple of hundred pounds for one of those, and unfortunately they no longer come by default with a Tudor watch. But as I conclude the video, let me know what you think of these straps. Would you spend approximately £70 on these straps alone, or £120 with a deployment clasp, or would you choose something else entirely? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, share and subscribe, and hit the bell icon to always watch the latest videos here on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching, this is Armon from watchchronicler.com, out.